Okay, mate, welcome to Friday Facts 345. We have a unit collision groups, uh, unit, congl unit group, conglomerate, con yeah, organizations, con masks, yep. Uh, Tilly, you shell particles, and I have a shell with me, Mojo. Hey, Mo. Hello. <laughs> you cannot words today. <laughs> no, I cannot words today. I'm so done. Uh, for the record, like, okay, so Friday Facts actually came out early, early this time. It came out like 8 p.m. our local time. Yeah, the, where were you on that? I was going to bug you about it. Well, the catch is I'm now living on US time. So I'm in bed at like 6 p.m., which meant when it came out at 8 p.m., 8 p.m., I was already in bed fast asleep. So I didn't know about it, so we couldn't do it last night. But it also means that I've been up since 1 a.m., my local time. It's now 4 p.m. in the afternoon, which means I'm done. I I'm like ready for bed. Pretty close. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's a thing. That's the thing, it makes words real hard. So, we're gonna do a whole video all about words, uh, starting with unit group collision mask. Um, so, the other week a bug report came in the forums, was, there was an issue uh, that groups of biters are trying to path over the water, but the bugs can't swim. Well, they can in a couple of mods actually, um, but we'll get to that shortly. So. It seems like something typical uh, and a mod being funky. I looked it up and it seems the hovercraft mod was playing monkey business with water collision mass to make his vehicles right over the water. One thing uh, involves setting water tiles to be walkable and then adding an additional collision layer to players and biters. And I remembered somebody asked me to zoom in more, so we're going to do that. Uh, what this modder didn't realize that is that unit groups have a fixed collision mask. Um, it used to be hard coded, but they changed it a while ago. Uh, so we just say, hey, it's a mod problem. Here's a quarter, call somebody who cares, right? There are a lot of modders that would actually take that quarter and make more money from that mod than they'd made in all their previous modding work. Just saying. Oh, yeah, because um, it's, it's the only only money you get. So yeah. if everything else is multiplied by zero, then yeah. Yeah, look, there's a lot of modders that we put out some really bad modding code to at least have it a look in to get a quarter. Um, you know, they might fix it afterwards. They might not. They might introduce some other bug. But yeah. Um, what, or just automate the process of farming out mods and getting a quarter for every time it breaks quarter, something. Like, like, if it's automated, you, you can rack up stuff really fast. Look at how much iron plate you go through every playthrough. Um, so yeah, it didn't sit right with Clonin uh, because deep inside he knew that unit groups shouldn't have a fixed collision mask. Uh, it didn't it didn't make sense really. So let's say you added flying units to the game. Uh, if you gave an individual command to the flying units to go attack the base, they'll happily fly over the water and attack without issue. However, you, if you put them in a unit group, a group of flying units with with a, a ground the ground with a ground group. They'll path around the water because the unit group still has a fixed collision mask. Uh, so this week he decided to fix it once for all. Turns out it wasn't that hard in the end. Um, as they mentioned back in th Friday Facts 340, which was the desync one that happened when the biters walked over the creep that affected the unit speed. Um, oh, yeah. That yeah, that one, one. That one. So they've already got a... Uh, a unit group, which means all the units in that group know the maximum speed and all the other details of all the other units in that group. Um, so they already have the logic in place to re recalculate uh, the group's properties based on its members. So he just hooked into that logic and said, hey, if you have a group of biters that can fly and a group of biters that can't fly, you need to use the pathing of the ones that can't fly. But if you've got ones that just fly, just fly. So, uh, so it made sense to him. He should ask, add all the masks together and that way only path where the units can path. And we have this lovely example of small biters going around our little, our little, um, it looks like a, fire, a tower defense maze. It really does. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have a group of water biters that walk right over water. As how, water biters do. How long has swimming biters been a thing? I'm gonna hazard a guess um, a day or two. Uh, no, 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 like, no, 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 it's been a long running meme for like four years, five years, along with flying biters. Oh, yeah, sure, in various forms. Like, there's Noxie swimming biters, which just change the water so shallow water players can walk through and biters can walk through. Um, which meant you had biters that could potentially swim a little bit. 
Um, actually, I think Noxie's swimming biters took a step up so the biters could actually pass through the water to a certain extent. It changed shallow water, so it was like normal land. Uh, the change in move speed to really to something really. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, now we've got the two a mixed group of small biters and water biters, and because they add their mass together, now they go where all the units can. So we now have them walking around, round through our tower walking defense. Walking around maze. like the non-water biters. Yeah, yeah, walking through our tower defense maze and probably getting shot on the way through. But it's going to mean that water, water biters are definitely going to be a thing. I'm now wondering how long it's going to be. So I'm, I'm wondering how long till we get flying biters. Because that's now going to be the next thing. Because it's I wonder if they're going to use me. the same graphic as regular biters. Uh, I'd assume they'd have less legs and more wings. Possibly. But that requires graphical art, which I know is always the biggest constraint for most modders. Trying to find somebody who can actually do the artwork. Um... The next question I have after that is when are we going to have something like a tunneling biter who doesn't path normally? Because we've already got the worm attack mod where. The oh, worms yeah, that makes the worms um, tunnel. The, 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 yeah, it, it does it through a tricky way. They're not actually pathfinding, they're, they're basically disappearing from one point and moving forward and reappearing. Get another, yeah. But they're a structure, they're not a unit. Yeah, they're a structure, not a unit. And I'm wondering what's the next step. I like at at the point of 1.0 because this is when most games, when they hit 1.0, they get a big influx of new players. They also get an influx of really good new modders who have just found uh, this yeah. game and then they mod the crap out of it. And I'm wondering what's how long it's going to be till we have a flying biter, uh, a, a swimming biter, a walking biter, and some sort of burrowing biter, and then somebody installs the four mods together. And the four unit groups can't work out any way to path from A to B with all four of them can agree. So they just don't path. And then somebody goes, I made a death world and nobody attacks me. In before it happens. Just saying. Oh, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. So, um... So yeah, as you can imagine, quite intu 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 intuitive, uh, I think. The group will try and stick together, and I mean the group can only path through places where all the members can reach. Uh, it feels nice to, nice to make fixes like this, and they're really relatively small in scope and risk. Until somebody mentions, like I just did, that yeah, 1.0, somebody's going to make a disaster. And it's not going to be one mod, it'll be five mods in a combination that makes a disaster. Um, it does clean up a lot of potential problems, and they are true there. You know, it means that now a hovercraft mod can actually do proper hovercraft work rather than be hacked together to sort of work um yeah assuming that um people all people all modders do things right most modders do i found um there yeah, are th there are a lot of mods that are really really hacked together that have the desired effect but it's not done well or elegantly and I find those mods don't tend to last. They No, are, they don't. And they're actually much less common now. They are, the they game are. Matures. Um generally good mods end up getting getting more players playing with them, more players talking about them, and more news spread about them, so they tend to take off. Whereas mods that um work somewhat just end up with, you know, the, these mods that have three hundred downloads and you just look at them and like it sounds good in in concept. Why does this really good idea have 300 downloads? You download it yourself. And you're like, oh, that's why. Um, suddenly, yeah, half yeah, my UPS yeah. disappeared. Uh, Zomtorio is a great example. Zomtorio, I love the idea. I love the concept. Until I actually played with it um, for more than 20 minutes and realized how much UPS was being stolen by the mod and how many things it hard coded into my game, which meant when I removed the mod, I actually had to run a whole bunch of console commands to revert it back to a death world. Oh, to clean all the, um, yeah. the crap behind. Yeah. Left, crap left behind. Yeah. I had one recently, which was Light Torio. It's supposed to add light, a little oh, light yeah, glow yeah, to every build. Yeah, I did, I, I, yeah. I did a highlight of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turns out when biters attack buildings, uh, it, you know, Light Torio has to remove all those lights. Yeah, it leaves the little invisible lights behind, didn't it? No, it was cleaning up the lights. Oh, okay. And it was taking the UPS away to do it. Oh. Yeah, the game was dipping down to like 30 UPS as um, all the lights were being destroyed and then rebuilt by bots and destroyed. Oh. Similar story with Deconstruction. Deconstruction, the game would just choke. 
Oh, okay. really? Okay. So, I am not a modder, but I already know that the mod should be looking for a on-destroyed uh, event and a on-built event to add and remove the lights. And it, it's not looking for those handles. It's looking through everything that's happening in the game, and that's probably what the cause is. Probably. Those events are very expensive. Uh, looking through every event is very expensive. Looking for a, a particular a call to a particular event, which is something that they added in... I want to say 16, and they've improved Actually, on I was going to say, um, the handle, I should have used the handles, which is a lot better. So, which, which, that was fairly recently, like in the last year, the, the handles thing. So maybe, maybe it's events used to be the way it used to be done, handles are the new way. So I, I, the way it is now is if something's made and you're looking for something to be made with a subset of this, with a subset of this, it then calls your mod rather than your mod having to read everything, which vastly cut down on the UPS of said mod, which I has made a the, massive the, the exact, It was handles, I think. I think it, was it is so handles. You could, I can't remember the FFF as well. As I said, it was in the last year. I and yeah. don't know. We're, we're, we're chatting on Discord at the moment, so I can't go browsing through the code monkey section of my Discord to find it, because it was recently talked about in there as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's probably the way the mod's interacting with the Factorio code. And look, if if the modder is is interested and then, and then somebody posts a bug report with like, hey, this is an issue, especially if somebody has some sort of experience like me and Mojo have with not necessarily modding, but with definitely knowing roughly how the code works and say, you should be looking at this rather than whatever you're doing. And we're potentially right. It gives the modder a great idea of where to go to improve their mod. And I've seen mods that have gone from horrible for UPS to be vastly improved. Um, actually, Clonin's mods. Um, when I oh ran yeah, them for, they they got a huge boost. The, I ran them for them for Bite of Hell, and I had UPS problems with this, that, and everything else. And Clonin asked me for a save, and of course, he's never probably run the mod on the scale that I did in a massive base with doing many, many repairs at once with his repair torrents, and found massive improvements in optimizations in the code just because somebody was dumb enough to put it to its limits. Um, holds up hand. Yep. Um. Same with, I think he's said the same for the mining drones, um, which I'm running my current series. If and when I hit a UPS limit, send him a save file and he'll have a look at it. Um, because I got to admit, I'm honest, they're, they're, they're way better than normal miners. They're at least way more interesting to look at, especially if you put them on one side of the train tracks with the ore on the other side of the train tracks and the train tracks oh, happen yes. to be a main line. That makes them a thousand times more interesting. Anyway, on to the artillery shell particle effect. So... Maximum hilarity. Mm-hmm. So, a nice uh, small finishing touch for all of you this week is adding a shell particle. A shell being injected from our artillery cannons was suggested back when we showed off the new sounds integration in the game, back in Friday Facts 341. And I didn't have enough time to look up the video to see where both of us mentioned this, I think. Um, it was mentioned on, on, I think, Reddit? I think Reddit? and or, or the uh, forums one of the two mentioned it as well um but i know we both added it to our wish list for can the artillery shell just to well, the artil artillery cannon ejector shell please um yeah yeah uh so yeah it was quick and easy to do they didn't get really fancy with it um i like it i just think it it's probably... a nice touch but admittedly at the same time it's it's a big it's, it, it does look quick and dirty it does look quick and dirty. It needs a little bit of polish, guys. Just just a little bit. Um, I actually had to look up the wiki to find the machine gun. They've got a, a gif there of the machine gun, or the, the machine gun turret just firing constantly. And it does the same. It spits shells out the back. And it's just one of those little details that people don't really realize. I realized that when they introduced it, because it wasn't always there. Um, I think in the past they had they had the the casings getting spot, uh, spit out the back and they just magically disappear. They never actually hit the ground. Um, but uh, yeah, oh, they sort of hit the ground, but the, there was pre-particle effect stuff and they, yeah, just sort of faded I away pretty quick. I don't think they... Did, I think there was a stage where they just didn't hit the ground. Or maybe I was playing on lower graphic settings. Either way. Um, Probably lower graphic settings because I possibly. remember them always ejecting. Was it the SMG never used to inject them? 
Um, it used to eject stuff, but it never hit the ground. Ah, there we go. That's what I'm thinking of because they now hit the ground as well. Um, but yeah, there's there's one of the 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 Gatlin gun firing non-stop with the shell the the, the shell the, the the casing particles because I know if I get it wrong somebody's going to yell at me in the comments the casing particles hitting the ground and they're smaller obviously so they're probably easier to do but they look really really good and then you go back to the artillery shell one and it just needs it needs a something I don't know what it is I, I'm not a graphics person but it just looks slightly odd. I know when it shoots out the third one, and it could be something to do with Factorio's, you know, third person, 45 degree offset, weird viewing angle, that the third shell, because you can see the end of the shell and it's black, it's round, but not round at the same time. I'm not sure if it's perfectly round or it or if it's not perfectly round and one of whatever it has is not the right one um i think it's the best i think it's yeah if the perspective is wrong and i think it's also lighting that's doing yeah it looks a little bit too shiny um i figured use casings should probably look less shiny much less shiny. yeah um but yeah look it's it's it, it's a great effect i i do appreciate the little things that they go that the, the, the devs do i'm actually really 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 interested what a kraken now looks like um with 100 200 artillery trains each firing shells continuously with casings popping out the side is going to look like um it's probably what i'm going to go do as soon as this friday facts video is done um, <laughs> open up Factorio, nice. open up an old save. Actually, it's not in the game yet, so I need to wait for it to be added to the game. But as soon as it's added to the game, yep, it's going to be on my list. Um, just, it's one of those things. It's one of those things that, yeah. Um, and I'm also actually curious because I know the normal gun turret, the casings always fling out the back of it. Um, doesn't matter what orientation it's in. Oh, do they? No, they they do have come out of a dedicated spot now. And I'm going to wonder what happens with the artillery. If it was facing, at the moment it's facing to the left, so they're coming out the top side. If it was facing to the right, are they will, gonna it, will it fire out the, the bottom? bottom? Yeah. And therefore, do so I get to see, see, see them appearing from somewhere? Um, maybe that's still in the polishing stage. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, the particles are nice, uh, uh, with a nice sprite sheet that Dom rendered from the original shell models, a bit of engine tweaking here and there. We had it, uh, ready in quite short order. So it's just another small bit of polishing, uh, that characterizes this stage of development. Yeah, it is in theory, it's something quick and easy to do. And maybe that's exactly what they've done. They've just done a quick and easy, Hey, look, this is a render that we can put up on the Friday facts and then you'll see it shortly. Which then brings me the fear of the artillery shell with sounds that we heard two years prior to it actually appearing in the Friday facts and in the game. Just saying. And you're worried about it never actually appearing, even yeah. though we more or less got them. Didn't yeah. We? No, we, we've got them now. We've got them now, but it showed up in a Friday facts two years ago, and then we finally saw them. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's the final polishing, but they are five months from release. Okay, they're actually sub five months now. Um, it's like four months, it's twenty five long, long, days. Um, long way to September. Yeah. So, um, and I, I have no idea what it's like in in um, Prague where they Prague. are. I'm yeah. I'm, I was thinking of the country. I might know. Just go with the city. Um, you don't know what they're called this this year. Hmm. I don't know what the country's called this year because they keep changing oh, names. Oh, yeah. I just I, call it Yugoslavia. I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go there, much. I'm not gonna go there. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know how it is in Prague. I don't know how, where they're they're up to. Um, you know, with with virus and everything else and quarantine. Like we're here in Australia, we're slowly coming out of it over the next couple of weeks. Um, my definition is when schools go back five days a week. That's when it's over and done with. Yeah, that's when things start going back to normal. Yeah, and we're at. In two weeks' time, kids are going to start going to school one day a week. So, we're, and I think businesses are allowed to go up to twenty five percent capacity. So we're at the stages where we're just starting to to, to release things a little bit. Um, 
but I have no idea how it is in, in Prague, and I have no idea if they're going to go back to the office in the next five months or whether they're going to be stuck with a, a remote working from home sort of attitude for, you know, a month, four months. I, I believe they pretty much operated on a working from home sort of arrangement pretty much. For, so it's not really they, that much of a change. Yeah, they did, but they didn't. They, um, they, they, I, one of the devs said somewhere in Reddit or forums, I can't remember which, that things are a little bit weird because everybody's working from home it sounded like there were some people who went to the office every day um uh yeah the majority of the core team was in the office like yeah. uh, Galorex and clonin and all that uh, as i understand it yeah i understand well uh, that's one of the things like uh, clonin has what two three kids at oh no clonin Kovrex has two or three kids at home um he definitely goes to the office every day because otherwise he'd get nothing done and that's going to be a catch <laughs> yes. currently he's not getting anything done this is why i'm living in u.s time zone i get up at 2 a.m because that way i get things done when kids are fast asleep even then i get to visit i get to see one or two children every night so yeah um good luck guys good luck guys i i really hope that they they can manage to stick to their their set release date but yeah, I also understand worldwide pandemics might throw a spanner in the works. Just a teeny weeny one. At which point, I do expect a spanner in the works t-shirt. Just saying. Just saying. It's Factoria, it's all about gears and stuff. They should be able to do a spanner in the works t-shirt. You know, sell that or, on. Or we on... can expect um, Reddit to produce some kind of spanner, Chen. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that'll do, that'll do. Anyway, with that said, I think we're done with the Friday Facts. Yes, no? Yep, that's it. Okay, thank you guys for watching. As always, we'll see you guys next week for Friday Facts 346. Um, and, oh, that one, I have a hint that it's probably going to be about landfill. I think you're right. Yeah. At least I hope I'm right. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, with that said, we're out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye-bye.